I'm Emma Tranter, I'm the second in maths at Ribblesdale School in Clitheroe and we draw pupils from the Ribble Valley and the surrounding local towns. I was involved in the Feedback 50 trial which now seems a very long time ago and we were just interested to try new technology. We're already looking at that point at going one-to-one -one with our pupils so that they all have a device. So at that point we started looking for software that would be useful to use and got involved with LBQ. All pupils use it from year 7 right through to year 11. There it certainly isn't a week with a class where I don't use LBQ at some point. If I have four lessons with a class in a week, I may well use it all four times, but certainly probably no less than two. The wonderful thing about LBQ is that there are so many question sets to choose from and pitched at so many different levels. So sometimes when people come in in year seven, we find that they still need some consolidation work on their primary curriculum. So we will use question sets from the primary sets, year six or year five but then there are question sets that take you right through to year 11 with real in-depth questions for higher GCSE, so everything is available. Because of the way the question sets are structured with the mastery system, it really gives you an insight into people's understanding of the basics of a topic, but then also their ability to apply that to reasoning and problem solving. And because you can run more than one question set at once, if you realise that some pupils in a class are doing really well with a particular topic, you can easily set another question set running and really challenge them with something harder. I've said before, I would now not consider going to a school that wouldn't use LBQ, um, simply because we get through so much more content per lesson. So the number of questions that pupils answer is massively increased by using LBQ. So they're getting more experience. I can see those results in real time before the end of the lesson. So I already know where I want to go next lesson. So there's a lot less time wasted. I don't spend time going over things that pupils can do, but equally, I very quickly know what they can't do and know what to spend the time on. The beauty of the mastery system and the way the question sets are set up means that pupils who can do the basics can do that very quickly and move on and then they're really being challenged by reasoning and problem solving tasks whereas pupils who need a little bit more scaffolding or a little bit more support can spend more time on those early questions and get the basics really grounded and because you can run the multiple question sets if necessary you can have different groups of pupils working on different sets. LBQ really does increase engagement and therefore increases behaviour. One of the things you can do of course is show the matrix on the board so that people can see where each other are up to. If I'm doing that I like to do that with the names hidden but just seeing that someone is a long way ahead or even just saying as a teacher most people are on around question 13. If you're only on question 6 that does give you the boost to think, oh, I do actually need to get on with this, I am behind. And I think that's a lovely thing that you never knew when people were working in their books or on a piece of paper, you'd no idea where anyone was up to. So it was very easy to hide and be the person who wasn't doing very much. I think one of the beautiful things is for them, it's not left in a book with ticks and crosses. And because a question isn't right and they don't move on until it is right, they always have that sense of achievement of I've got to a certain place and those questions were correct. So at the end of the lesson, there's always a feeling of achievement. Reluctant mathematicians, those people who arrive and say, I've always hated maths or I can't do algebra. My instant answer has always been, well, you've never done it with me. Perhaps we can change that. But I think LBQ does to help to change that simply because the way pupils collaborate and the way the feedback is given to them throughout getting things wrong, they actually are encouraged to become far more resilient. And I think through that resilience, they realise that they can then do maths and that they're often better than they think they are. The way we use LBQ doesn't really change once we get to year 10 and 11. We still would use it very frequently in lessons. And pupils, the question sets really do challenge pupils. We found that the higher GCSE sets have some really good problem solving and reasoning questions that are really making pupils think and that really model the actual GCSE questions on the papers. I dread the thought of having to go back to marking endless books and not realising that pupils have got it wrong until it's too late. Not having done that live intervention as I needed to. Actually making those worksheets, finding those worksheets rather than question sets that are just ready and spot on or can be adjusted very quickly. 
not being able to do pick and mix and sum up three or four topics at the same time. But no, I just don't want to go back to the world before LBQ. <laughs> I think the amount of data we have through LBQ has really helped information we can give at parents' evening. Because we can see the results of every question set for every pupil, it's really easy to be able to say, this pupil finds algebra most difficult, or this pupil finds fractions really difficult. And being able to give that sort of detailed feedback is really helpful for a parent to then be able to work with their child on that. I also think the engagement increase and pupils' enjoyment of maths lessons that's improved so much using LBQ means that pupils are far more ready to come to Parents' Evening with parents and discuss their own progress and they're far more aware of how they're doing. It's brought to me a reduced time marking and a reduced time planning and a much better focus on each individual pupil live in the lesson so that I am more aware of every pupil's strengths and weaknesses and I know who's likely to need me to intervene in a particular topic. Sometimes you get surprises, that's the way it goes. But I think I know my pupils better and they're far more willing to interact on a one-to-one -one than they used to be. The relationship that has been built through pupils having that better resilience and having a higher level of confidence has just meant that because they always feel they achieve, they always feel positive about coming to a maths lesson.